Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition top story. The Ministry of Education is set to launch an education platform. St. Lucia is closer to achieving a sustainable COVID-19 vaccine policy. And the Seven Crop Program realizes another milestone. The Ministry of Education is set to launch an education platform later this year, which has been developed specifically to enable educators in classroom presentation and interactive assignments, among other functions. Hamadi Mark reports. The government of St. Lucia has taken another step towards greater efficiency, this time in the education sector. Through a collaboration with the government of Taiwan, the government of St. Lucia has introduced the Education Platform Project. The platform is a digital tool that addresses the needs of students, teachers, and school administrators. Michelle Charles is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training. The primary objective of this interface is to provide a centralized, secure, and open resource environment for teachers, students, and parents to interact, communicate, and collaborate for the well-being of our students. Note here the involvement of parents and an embracing of what that demographic can add to the development of our students. Parental involvement is critical to student success, you will agree, and this platform will allow parents access to the learning and performance records of their children, as well as assist in identifying the child's status and needs. The platform provides students with online learning courses, multimedia material, as well as the online test and assignment to reflect their learning performance. At the opening ceremony for the teacher training workshop for the platform, His Excellency Peter Chen spoke on Taiwan's contribution to the education sector. He said the education platform is one of the four components of the ICT in education development project designed especially for St. Lucia. The system can show the students' attendance record and uh, send out interactive assignments, conduct online tests, and collect student reports. It is a hybrid classroom management system to monitor, track, and record students' learning and performance. I like to encourage all the participants to master and manage the use of education platform, and by doing so, we can accelerate the transition of schools in Salusha into e-education. Taiwan has steadfastly supported all projects that will bring innovation to Salusha. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, thanked the government of Taiwan for their continued support and highlighted the importance of training teachers to utilize the new platform. The project is initially being piloted in seven schools and by 2022 will be rolled out across the country. From the Government Information Service, I'm Humadi Mark, reporting. St. Lucia is well on its way to ensuring it achieves a sustainable COVID-19 vaccine policy in country. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs recently engaged stakeholders in a consultation on COVID-19 vaccine policy aimed at addressing vaccine hesitancy and improving vaccine coverage in St. Lucia. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma-George says 
She is very pleased that the consultation provided an opportunity for the public to be involved in the decision-making process as to foster acceptability of the COVID-19 vaccine. The majority of the consultation was giving us a chance to listen to the voice of the various stakeholders. So it ranged from those members who were completely against the use of the vaccines and they were able to give us what some of their fears were, what some of their concerns were, and they also indicated how they would prefer vaccines to be rolled out, how they wanted it to be are made available to the public. So we did take note of the viewpoints of a lot of those stakeholders and we invited them in one week to provide their position paper which we are going to use to guide so that cabinet can get a feel of the opinions and the ideas and the views of the various stakeholders for their, for their information. Anatomical pathologist Dr. Stephen King says he was delighted to participate in this consultation and to hear the feedback from the public. It went through a whole series of emotions. Um, there was a lot of disagreement, a lot of conversation. But I think that was what is important because none of us have the absolute truth. And it's only together that we can find the best way forward. The other thing I, I, I think that struck me was the need for, for information, the need to have more of these kinds of dialogues, the, the need to engage people more. Um, the more we educate, the more we engage. In fact, the more we become educated, because I don't have all the information and knowledge. I learned in, in that consultation speaking to people. Dr. Sharon Belmar George also said it is important to continue the promotion of stakeholder dialogue as to chart a roadmap for recommendation on the vaccine policy. So this is the first of others to come, and especially since the new vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine will be available from 12 years and older, we are hoping to have another consultation, but this time with our local pediatricians and with the Ministry of Education as well on board to, to guide and to have a discussion because we have to allow parents as well to, to, to voice their concerns we have to let teachers voice their concerns as well. So we need to look at every, every stakeholder to ensure that um, their voice is heard. The Ministry of Health thanks the stakeholders, including the Medical Fraternity, Legal Fraternity, Trade Union Federations, Business Sector, Tourism Sector, Community Leaders and the Media, to name a few, for their participation in this consultation. Reporting from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, I am Fennel Neptune. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, in the wake of increased COVID-19 cases on Ireland, is urging the public to adhere to all safety protocols. The Ministry for the period March 2020 to present has confirmed a total of 7,232 cases in country and 97 deaths. Some 1,187 new cases were diagnosed over the last 14 days. The daily infection rate for the past week was 61.4 per 100,000 per day, with an average of 111.2 cases per day. In relation to this new wave from July 13, 2021, a total of 1,791 persons were positive. 52% are in the age group 25 to 49 years. 58% of the cases are female. The majority of cases are from Castries, Brosley, and Denry. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George indicated that based on contact tracing data, the majority of cases diagnosed are related to social activities. The ministry, she explained, is bolstering the public health system so as to manage the increase in cases. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs is working to strengthen the public health system to continue managing the increased COVID-19 cases. The Pan American Health Organization has expressed support in ensuring the necessary PPE test kits and technical support is available in country. We continue to note high numbers as we test the contacts of cases. Based on the long incubation period of this virus, we forecast that these numbers will continue until we note a reduction in the rate of increase possibly by next week. The response this last weekend by the public was promising 
and we ask the public to continue working with us and to exhibit responsible behavior to manage this fourth wave. In the past week, the Ministry of Health has collaborated with the Minibus Association, Chamber of Commerce, Tourism Sector and the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. These meetings were targeted to discuss and strengthen collaborations and efforts in reducing the risk and managing the spike in COVID-19 cases. The Ministry of Health is also working closely with the Ministry of Education to advise on the status of school reopening. At present, both the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca vaccines are available free of charge in country at the various wellness centers. Vaccination remains the most effective public health measure in managing infectious diseases. To date, from the positive cases diagnosed in country, 1.66% have been fully vaccinated. These vaccines have been proven to be safe and effective in protecting persons from developing COVID-19, its severe forms, complications, hospitalizations and death. We continue to urge the public to access the various sites to get immunized at the soonest. Encourage your family and friends to get immunized so we can all be protected. We continue to advise the public to remain vigilant as the increased transmission and risk of the variants of concerns is present. Let us all adhere to the protocols that are put in place to keep us safe. These include regular hand washing, the use of face masks in public places, avoiding crowds and persons with respiratory symptoms, and keeping frequently touched surfaces clean. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. The Department of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission through the Seven Crops Project, has successfully completed a watermelon trial and sampling in Magritte Miku. As part of an experiment for the introduction of new watermelon types in St. Lucia, eight different varieties of watermelons, as well as seven different varieties of cantaloupes and honeydew, were planted in June of this year. The watermelon trial forms part of the enhancement of the efficiency of production and distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project, better known as the Seven Crops Project, with the overall aim of reducing the food import bill of St. Lucia. This can be achieved through the introduction of new varieties due to the increased yields and pest and disease tolerance. The new watermelon types will also broaden the range available on the St. Lucian market in order to better meet consumer desires. Project coordinator of the Seven Crops Project, Adli Nudovic, explains that the watermelon trial also seeks to curb the shortcomings in the production and marketing chain, such as the shelf life and quality of watermelons. This um, trial is not done in isolation of, of the issues identified, okay? So now we are able to, to have a, a wider base of greater selection to choose from knowing the characteristics of these, of these crops here. Obviously, we could see what works and what doesn't work. And when it's replicated in other farms, we could understand that um, which ones that, 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 that we could go ahead with to address the issues um, identified by the marketplace. Under the Seven Crops Project, demonstration plots have been set up around the island. Watermelon trial farmer Bernard Jabatiste encouraged farmers to take advantage of the opportunity being offered to gain experience diversifying into these new varieties. So far, I must say I've learned a lot from, from the trials and from what um, th those persons have explained with the different varieties. I, I, I think it's a good... Um, it's a good thing for some of the other farmers to try some of these crops so that we can supply the market because as we know a lot of our produce is still being imported and we need to try and and cut on, on that supply. Parliamentary representative from Mekud North, Honorable Jeremiah Norbert, expressed his satisfaction with the trial, stating that capturing the interest of the youth is critical to ensuring the sustainability of initiatives like this. I would love to see even younger farmers get involved in this initiative, play their role. Because, I mean, people like Mr. Bogland, they've, they've given their whole life, they've dedicated their entire life towards agriculture. And I think right now we have the, the, we have the responsibility to educate our young people, let them see the value in agriculture, so that agriculture becomes something that is attractive to them. And I think this initiative is one that is, when, if, if we sell it properly, 
our young people can buy into it and see the, the, the benefits that they can get from it. Acknowledging the continuous successes of the Seven Crops project, the Department of Agriculture maintains its commitment to improving the agriculture sector in St. Lucia. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. We are working parents and we breastfed both babies exclusively. When I first six years, I buy you two tete, you two me bon cervel. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Weol. Monsieur Tan Janel, Monsieur Madame Department de Nouvelle Responsabilité pour Information à Gouvernement de la GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pour la NTN, à propos de Nouvelle à Weol, à propos de Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement de la CIA, il y a qu'à travailler pour avancer l'implémentation de cette WEG à son meilleure façon pour contrôler les services de tabac, les cigarettes et n'importe quelle façon de fumer. Ça a été fait par une cette WEG nationale pour contrôler les services de cigarettes et la manière dont les gens fumer dans le pays. Ça a été possible et puis l'assistance des organisations. Ça c'est Bloomberg Philanthropies Initiative et aussi une branche d'organisation qui a créé. Union Against Tuberculosis et la Long Disease, ça veut dire Agence Sala a fait bataille contre la maladie TB et la maladie en plus de mort. C'est vrai que Sala a adressé toutes les risques qui sont associés à et a fait contre le choc pour l'augmentation de ces maladies qui vivent et puis il a dit dans le monde tout le temps qu'il y a un vivant, il y a un vivant et qu'il y a aussi une cause de la mort avant l'air. C'est vrai que ça là, ça suit tout l'autre WEG international, régional et aussi national, supporté par son pour implémenter yo effectivement. Le, tout ce WEG ça là venu en place, yo ça a adressé toutes les nécessités pour empêcher de péter et occuper ces maladies ça là. Le programme là qui commence depuis un mois de juillet a duré pour deux mois seulement. Et ça a bout septembre 2021 qui a porté une formation qui a été avalée, et des développements, c'est vrai que là, établi un contrôle des services de tabac. Tout le monde qui est concerné a trouvé une invitation, participé à l'exercice. Et mon site là a encouragé à servir l'occasion et d'établir établi. En cette ci il y a un meilleur service de santé. Gouan quantité la pluie qui tombe du finissement de la semaine passée et de cause à pile à falaï et à l'eau plusieurs places à pays là. Le directeur de l'organisation pour ménagement des as nationales, ça c'est le niveau, c'est Mme Doreen Gustave, a nous ce qui a falaï là, affecté diverses, la famille, diverses paroisses et à l'eau de l'eau de l'eau de combler plusieurs communes de l'eau de l'eau de l'eau de l'eau. Nous jouons un rapport d'accueil. Yo kai um, Marigo, um, de son me la batte en personne de Dida kai la, son me yon kawete lo peyi. Um, nou ni yon son me a bokaj kai la de son, avec um, la ni moun, sek moun kawete kai sa la, yon maman papa, avec toi ti mamay. Um, nou kai la pa bo 
ευθύνες πας και λαχαλάδα δεν σαν πάντε καλά που σε ισότι εμπενι το γιοργάδει εφαρμοστρακτια γιοργάδει δύο ήταμο που μου κουλιώτο απάπα εσύ ατού αδει πιες πας και είδες σε δάγι νούσα ζεν σε λάνι βαζινάς κι για πούστε μονα δίδα Lani ya fwe ada memle gizla kuyu kali adventis la evde bayo ya mwa kuwiti ada fatma ini la. Ni moja mene had kush bayo batla kuweti ek manje bayo pu de toa ju nuka kotine pale pi yoga de sa yo buze paske lani ti bebi lani lani jen ti mamay lani lot la faya la ikifet Fala faila, ime akai kiti ja tuve koi afekti ebi hurricane Elsa. Kai sala rufla fete la ti soti, ui ti soti evek yo se muntala stika espe u gren asistant u wange fete la. Me yo te mete a tapoli na lei. Mi la pia vini e vechi o tuo di dò, la tini shai glu o di dò e quasi pa bacca e la sui pate bo pui o uiti. So nu poi io mette io ad a shelter, nu già bai io bagai pui o dormi, nu già bai io mangi, bagai cosa bai pui ti bebi io ni, nu ca assiste io, nu ca visite io, pasca io ad a shelter a pui zò, e vechi nu ca i gade Nous avons un autre report que je n'ai allé, nous avons déjà eu un autre canal qui a été affecté encore bon matin, donc nous avons essayé pour aider ces gens là. Mais là, nous avons un autre glo, avec nous avons essayé l'appliquer et tomber encore. Nous avons dit que nous avons pris un cas pour faire ça au pays pour manger des cailloux, pour faire ça au pays pour quoi. En parlant de ça, Yon mouve afalaye ki te bouche chime pa wes kolombet, so fouye, ki a trouve netwaye, me yon ofisye hod. Se des afe konstruksyon ek pa vo, ka konseye chofe loto, ou kwe bon kokosyon, kom chime a ka glisse an pil, a wese lta de de gwe la bou, ki samble, mos la jou. Se es pa les ofisye, ki se travaya ka y fini netwaye, finalman, madi leven ka ou. C'est aussi à dire que la station de pompiers à Sofia, c'est pour nettoyer la boîte qui est restée à Sofia, en Colombie. Ce travail a été capable de nettoyer une ligne chemin, mais dit après-midi, pour 8 heures, il y a déjà débloqué la façade. Le mauvais affaire est là, fait qu'on est les débrouillés, et déposé sur le tête de Goussaï à Sofia. C'est un terrain qui cause l'auto qui... Ta voyage sot te soufriye pou kaspi pou te tanje la out yo pou vie fò pito. Fala y sa la te poto kouan, telefon, te jete kanse pou to sa la a te. Direkte ni mo, osi pale di situasyon sa la a Kolombet. Mdm Gustav, a fala y an Kolombet nou apon ki chime an ha, yo ha travay an lesa a prezan? Oui, so um, Colombet infrastructure te a sui ka travay. Um, Informasyon ki yu de nou da kel machin ka pa se a brezan. Me la te a mouve a fala ye Colombet. Ek mese bedam, a se kote nou a twa bout nouvel la pou jodi ya. Mwen ka yon meske ou tan pou ka gade. Mwen ka bo yon vite te yon. Ou jene pi mwen, te die kwa sa ve la vi. Te ngay prezant to nouvel a pe yon la brezan. Ka vi yon prezant to jener. Messi Appeal Primus. We now take a look at the weather. Sunrise Wednesday, 5.55 a.m. Winds will be blowing from between the east and northeast and east near 21 miles per hour or 33 kilometers per hour. The weather is fair to partly cloudy and hazy with a few showers. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves. 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea beavers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds, locally rough seas and reduced visibility. 
A plume of Saharan dust will continue to cause reduction in visibility and air quality across the Lesser Antilles over the next few days. Persons with respiratory ailments and dust allergies are advised to take the necessary precautions. Two tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Both of these systems have a low chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next two days. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.